Musketeers, welcome back to my channel. This is episode three of my Design Mini Mouse Ears With Me video. So I'm gonna give you three mouse ear tutorials where I'm gonna design um, so these three pairs of ears and one of them is designed on two characters, one is designed on a movie franchise, and one is designed around an iconic piece of Disneyland. So I can't wait for you to see what three ears I'm going to be making, and in no time at all, I'm going to be displaying them right up here. All right, everybody, I thought it would be kind of fun that if instead of me just telling you which characters, because it is two, which characters the first set of ears today are based on, I'm going to give you some hints by just showing you the fabric. So first, we have some black fabric. So who could that be? Am I making classic character ears? Am I making villain ears? Star Wars ears? What on earth could black be? Here's a little piece of trim I'm going to use. Does that give you any more clues? Hmm. Then I'll be jazzing up the ears with these gold buttons. Anything coming to your mind? I'm also going to need red. The bow is going to be yellow. Is it starting to come together for you? I only have one clue left, so it's your time to guess is now. And polka dot fabric. So if you could not guess, I think you probably did because you're smart. But in case you were having like a little brain moment or and it just wouldn't come to you, these are going to be Mickey and Minnie Mouse ears together. I'm going to be making the backs of these ears plain red and I'm going to explain to you why at the end. And I'm also going to be doing a Mickey side where I'm also going to cut out a little bit of red um, fabric and put that on for his shorts. I'll put the buttons on there and I'll show you how that process looks as well. I'm going to use this to represent Minnie Mouse and I am going to put this lace at the bottom to kind of represent like a petticoat at the bed bottom of a dress. And I'm not sure, this is this small bow I made and I'm not sure yet exactly if I'm going to use this one or a larger bow, but I use this for a prop. So, and just so, this is a piece of artwork that I made. Um, my name is Kate and my husband's name is John. And I just, I really love it. So, and I actually have made this since for other people in our lives who love Disney. And it's super easy. And if you're into painting at all, you should definitely try something like this out. And if you're interested, let me know. I'll do a quick Mickey and Minnie Mouse ear painting tutorial at some point if people down below say they would like one. Let's get into the ear making process and cover some of those cardboard and batting fabric ears. Okay, I just wanted to show you guys this part. I already covered the entire ear with black fabric for the Mickey ear. Then I cut out just a piece of fabric again. I kind of just drew out my template and I didn't do all the way around because it's just his shorts. So I'm going to fold down this section all the way across and then I'm going to glue it under and Mickey will be no longer naked. So Mickey and Minnie are fully dressed at this point. They still need some decoration, but you can see the basic idea there. And those blank red ones again are the backs of the ears. I'm going to tell you why in a little bit. All right, so I actually did these ears once before on like a test run to see if I kind of liked the design, and I did, but they ear, the ears were not spectacular. So that first time, one thing that was nice is I found a red headband at Joanne, so I didn't actually have to cover it. But as you can tell, this is a hot pink headband and that's not exactly the aesthetic I'm going for. So I do need to cover it with this red fabric and I was kind of between red and black, but I'm going to show you something special I'll do with the trim to bring in the black a little bit onto the headband. So it'll just be a little different. So I'm just going to fold this fabric into the headband and attach the ears together and we'll keep designing. I just attached both of the ears to the headband and you might notice that it's sitting on top of another headband and the reason why is what I normally do to space my ears appropriately is I lay the headband on top of the headband I already like the spacing on and then I kind of just use it almost as like a template and please don't try to put your ears on too quickly or continue decorating too fast because you really want to give a few minutes for the ears to firmly attach and dry onto the headband. Next is going to be attaching the black trim. So I will share with you that typically I just put the trim right around here to hide the rough ugly edges where we've attached the two pieces of cardboard. However, I'm actually going to start the trim here 
and continue it all the way up and over the ear, all the way down and around the top, all the way around this ear, and fully down to the bottom of the headband. And it'll give you something new to see if maybe you like that look. And then I think we just need to attach the bow and a few decorations and our ears are finished. Okay, everybody, I thought you might be interested in seeing kind of dimensions and what kind of size bows that they, the batting would make. So I've cut a few pieces. Now I did eyeball these. Um, the edges are not perfectly straight and it really doesn't quite matter if you're you know perfectionist to go for it and use a ruler and cut out perfectly, but that's not me. Now the first small piece is roughly about five inches by four inches. The medium size piece of batting is roughly six inches by five inches and the huge piece of batting is roughly seven inches by six inches. So just slight increases. I feel like if you go any higher you might have a ridiculously sized bow and if you go any smaller you might not get the heft that you're looking for. But now I will be able to show you using the same color fabric against a pair of ears. Do you prefer a small bow, a medium bow, or a large bow? As a reminder, make sure that you cut your fabric slightly larger than the outline of the batting, maybe about an inch on each side. And there you can see from the smallest size, which would probably be too small to fit on a basic pair of ears, so I would go a lot bigger than those dimensions I gave you um, on the previous scene. Middle size bow, pretty decent. I'm of course always a big fan of the large bows, however. I will say with this one, at first I was like, oh, I'm cutting this like way too wide because you can see this, the width of the ribbon for the small bow is pretty much the same as like the medium and the large bows, but I kind of love how that came out. So I'm going to have to use this on something or at least use that technique too, just to kind of do a larger size bow. Here the ears are with all of the trim around it. It's still drying a little bit. But I kind of think it's just like a fun look. And you can see the gold trim on the inside. Um, and now you'll notice the backs of these ears are totally blank. Again, I'm keeping that a secret for a minute. But I did put a little bit of trim on the backs. Normally I don't jazz up the backs of my ears. I just don't really see that much of a point. But there's a point for this one. And now if I flip these ears over, they're looking pretty good. Like you can tell these are Mickey and Minnie, but they're missing a little something and not just a bow. But what they are missing, I'm going to put that little lace right here to represent like the petticoat of a dress. I'm going to give Mickey Mouse some short buttons. <laughs> and then I need to think about whether I'm going to do, oh, I kind of like this teeny tiny little bow. I really wanted to do a bow like off to the side, but I unfortunately like have some really ugly glue mistakes. So I think this is a perfect use of a bow. I'm going to play around with it and I'll let you see what size bow and final decorations I decided on at the end. All right guys, for the second pair of ears in today's video, I want to give you like a little fabric tip. So like I said, Joanne's Fabrics, in the fabric remnant section of Joanne's, which is just in the fabric section, usually in like a little cart or um, like a bin, they're going to have fabric that is the end and they couldn't sell and it's going to be a cheaper price than it normally would have been. However, this can be a pro and a con. So pro, you get cheaper fabric if you were going to already buy that fabric in that amount. Con, you might be paying more than you would have needed for your ears anyway. Like I can tell this blue, that's way more fabric than I'm going to need for this one set of ears. However, I've been looking nonstop for these two colors, this kind of baby pink and this kind of baby blue, because they really, to me, show the mm, attraction, I guess you could say, or Disney icon that I really wanted to make. It was one of the first sets of ears I was dying for, but I had to put it off because I couldn't find the right colors. That's why I had to jump on these as soon as I saw them. Does anything come in mind when it comes to Disney as an icon that has like a pink and kind of a, a baby blue in it? It might be more gray than blue. However, when I see these, I think uh, oh, Sleeping Beauty's Castle in Disneyland. So I'm going to be making these along with a sparkly silver fabric to represent that castle, that icon. Let's do this. I took this really shimmery, shiny, sequiny silver fabric, too many S's there really, and you can see there's also little flecks of gold in it as well, so 
It's almost like if the sunshine were hitting the castle. That's what I'm gonna tell myself at least. And I've made the basic bow. I wanted to point out though that I did not put batting in it this time. So it's gonna be a bit of a flatter bow. And I'm gonna let you see, I did this for you, so you could see if you like the idea of a puffier bow or a flatter bow. I mean, I think in, in the long run, all bows are great bows. This is the fabric that's going to go around the center of the bow. So that step is done. And then, oh my God, I am totally obsessed with this super shiny headband with of course my signature gold in there. I love silver and gold together. You cannot tell me they don't go together. They were even part of my wedding colors. I love silver and gold and not just for Christmas time. Okay, and there you see the bow is all finished assembly and decoration all that's left to do okay everybody i went ahead and i covered both the ears in this silver rope fabric and i just want to say i do not recommend this fab this lining at all this little trim it's this silver fabric i probably would not get it in any color if you see it it's kind of like a sparkly rope look because it frays terribly on the end like this was just cut right down here and it's already completely unraveling so like you can maybe notice some fraying down here and i was even considering lining like the ends of, ends of my ears but it's just too much trouble with this i would definitely not get this or any other color trim Okay, now these ears might look a little strange and it's because I did not center the bow. The bow is totally skewed off to the blue ear rather than about right here would be the center of it. So it's skewed off. Um, and then there's so a little bit I, I glued to the pink bow and a lot is glued to this blue bow here. Now I accidentally also made my bow a little bit larger on the blue side, but when I'm wearing them, it kind of looks decent. Like the perspective is fine. So again, if you mess up, just play around with things. Like I glued it a little bit this way so it didn't look quite as large. I pulled this out a little bit so it looked a little larger. Don't worry about it. Like when it looks, when it's on your head, it all looks good. All right, so these ears are mostly done. I am gonna tell you about a final detail I am hoping to add later, but not right this second. Ah, guys, would you look at this fabric for my final pair of ears today? And I was not gonna make a third pair of ears for this video, but I, I'm, I'm doing this video before my Disneyland trip, and I was like all of a sudden like, you know what? I need Pixar ears. And I went on Etsy, because this was not at Joanne's. Shocking, I know, right? But I did go on Etsy, and not only did I find this amazing fabric, but it was the last like couple yards that this lady had. So I jumped right on it, it got to me in time, and I'm making these ears, and I can't wait to show you the next frame. I will show you the characters I chose to focus on for the front and backs of my ears. So if you want to make any guesses about who I'm going to showcase on these ears, now's your chance. All right, so here are my four ears here. And you can see that with the fabric, I made sure to get a variety of characters and symbols from the Toy Story franchise. Now, if you were going to guess which would be the fronts of my ears and which would be the backs, I wonder what you would guess. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you might guess correctly that this is gonna be the front left, this is gonna be the front right, and these are gonna be the backs. Now, I know these have so much more going on and they really look more oh, even overtly Toy Story, but these two guys are my favorite characters and I have to wear them and they're a little more simplistic. So I think that these will look great from the front and from the back. I just want to take a second and talk to you about headband. So this is a beautiful headband that is a common color stocked at Joann's and it would go really nicely with these ears. Don't you think like the light blue and the slightly darker blue? I think that would be lovely. However, I'm insane and I think I'm going to wrap the headband with this fabric as well. Like I just want like a Toy Story explosion on my head, I guess. So I am going to wrap it, but I do think that this would be gorgeous by itself. So don't always feel like you have to wrap the headband because, again, I mean, honestly, like, I'll probably Instagram these and that's why I really want the explosion. But when I'm wearing them, you're not even going to be able to mostly see that band that I covered. Okay, and so here you have the ears with the gold trim on the inside. The ears are covered. Just gives that little more impact, in my opinion. And I did decide to go with the same gold trim in the center as on the sides of the ears. Now, when it came to the bow, I decided to make a pretty large yellow bow that I am going to put in the center, but I thought, you know what? 
that's not that's that's not quite enough for me so i also made this little pixar bow and you can kind of see I, I mean i do think it looks stunning also with just the pixar bow and look another little alien and lots of yay a little woody face too um so i'm actually going to do something a little jazzy where i put the yellow bow and then i'm going to put the pixar bow on top of it and it just really pops and just something about it it adds so much more oomph i am going to need to make i think a smaller center piece i made this thicker piece and i have a feeling it's just gonna well maybe not I'll, i'm gonna see if i like that i am kind of liking it i like that woody's face is hanging out maybe i'll actually i'll let woody sit straight up maybe i'll try that out so don't be afraid to play with the bow elements but i did have to make two of the toy story bows because the first one was just too large so you might need to play with things a little bit and there you go that is what the bow looks like get the giant yellow bow you have this smaller toy story bow and then what are you kind of just peeking out from us and i want to show you that i actually kind of put that ribbon over everything just to make everything a little bit more secure since there was a double bow there but honestly these are the running for my favorite ears ever Okay, everybody, here's a pair of ears number one, and they are, of course, designed after the iconic Sleeping Beauty castle in Disneyland. Now, they aren't quite finished, and the reason why is because, because they're Sleeping Beauty castles, and they're very because it's after the Sleeping Beauty castle, it's very subtle what it's supposed to be. Like, I can't wait to get, like, a nice picture in front of the castle wearing these. Um, but they're, it's very pink and baby blue with some silver in there. So... What I wanted to do was actually right in the center of the bow or maybe on this expansive pink side was to put a pin that showed Cinderella's castle. So it was a little bit more obvious or overt what it was gonna be. I also looked into on Etsy patches of, of Sleeping Beauty Castle, but I didn't find anything that I really liked well enough, but that's a tip for you. Definitely could look for patches um, on Etsy or Joanne's Fabric sometimes has patches or wherever you find patches. Um, and so I was really excited. I got the pin and it was really damaged. Like it was scuffed up and scratched up and discolored and the pin back was loose. So I did contact the seller and she was nice enough to give me a full refund. Um, so really no harm, no fail, I guess. But so my plan is to take these ears with me to Disneyland and buy a pin there to kind of see what I like and then I'll finish them off actually at Disneyland. I'll bring a locking pin back with me and I'll try to put it through the bow and put the pin back in. And if it doesn't work for whatever reason, like the bow might be honestly too thick for that to happen. And if that's the case, then I'll just finish them when I get back. But I'm happy to have these ears. I like them. Um, they're my third place in this video though, because the other two I just think are so amazing. Let me give you a quick close up of these. And because there's so much pink here, I was actually thinking that there might, this might be a good place to display one or two or even three pins displaying the iconic castle. Let's go on to the other two because I do actually prefer them. Okay, pair two, and this is of course in honor of Pixar Pier opening at Disneyland during the trip while I'm there. Um, I mean, it's been open before I get there, but it'll be opened recently when I get there. And so all of a sudden I was like, you know what? I need to have a pair of Pixar ear for that trip. So I did find this fabric on Etsy. Now it was the last of its kind when I checked, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't go check because either you might find something that you equally like from that seller or from Etsy in general, or you might be able to find this. Anyway, I just typed in Toy Story Fabric. I mean, there was no secret code or anything. And I do love how striking the double bow looks. Like, I'm so excited. Let me give you a close up. Definitely try that double bow technique out at some point, guys. Let me show you the backs of these two because I do think the backs are cool. I know a lot of you probably would have made these the front because, oh my god, look how many more characters there are. That's just the way the fabric played out a little bit, but I don't mind having these as the back of the ear. I really like it. Okay, time for the third pair of ears, which... 
I can't even decide if I like these ears, those ears the best or the third pair. I kind of think the third pair looks like the most professional of all the ears I've made. And it's been in my head so long, I'm so happy they're actually out in the world. Yay! Ear pair number three represents, of course, the classic combination of Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse. And so I've really wanted their outfits to kind of shine through, but using just a couple of details, nothing too crazy. And then, of course, the yellow bow, which would be like Minnie Mouse's, and I think Mickey Mouse's shoes are also yellow. I think so. Anyway, red, black, yellow, you can't go wrong with those. Let me go ahead and give you a close-up of this pair. And for once, I actually used a small bow because I really didn't want to hide any of the ear. And I just want to remind you that the backs of these ears are completely blank with just this nice red fabric. And the reason why is because I intend on wearing these in Disneyland and getting them signed, the Mickey Mouse side and the Minnie Mouse side by each of them. So I just can't wait to have that happen. I'm thinking I'll probably bring a black Sharpie with me that'll probably pop the best off the red. And I'll definitely show you guys those when I come back. But I love this pair. I'm guessing that the one of these is probably going to be your favorite pair. Please let me know in the comments down below which was your favorite pair of ears in this video. What pair of ears are you inspired to complete? And what kind of ears would you like to see me do in the future? I think I only have like one or two more that I really, really want to do that's in my head. I want to do a pair of bell ears. That's just off the top of my head. There might be one or two more. Um, but I would love to get more suggestions from you guys. So thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you real soon.